Welcome back to Nest Generation. Today we're going to be taking a look at volume 16 of Nintendo Power, which features Maniac Mansion on the cover. We're also going to be taking a look at Kickle Cubicle and doing some puzzling action. Let's jump right in. Maniac Mansion on the NES was a point-and-click adventure. This is our first point-and-click, Laurel. Oh, was it Shadowgate? Oh. That's a little bit different because you're not... That was like first person. Like, right. Whereas this is a uh, third person. Okay. So it's kind of a new new genre here that we're taking a look at. So a point-and-click game, like we said, by uh, Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick. I actually listened to a couple interesting interviews with Ron Gilbert talking about the creation of the game. So there, there's a lot of complex paths and interactions because there's so many different items that you have to collect. Right. And different characters. Dave is the main character and then six yeah. selectable characters. There's a number of different combinations you could play through with and so right. to actually test the game before they programmed it, they actually made it like a board game and like played it through to get all kind of the different permutations of how things could work and like where you could get stuck and how that would all work. So there's the, the main characters, Dave, Sid, and Razor are both kind of musicians. Each kid that you can select has like kind of different abilities they, that yeah. you can use. They have it set up so that no matter which combination you pick, you can win. You can win. Then there's Michael, who's like a photography. Yeah, Wendy, who's a novelist, right? Mm-hmm. Jeff, who's a surfer, and then Bernard is like science fair. Yeah, classical he, he, he nerd. Can fix electronics. So a big thing with these kind of games is is selecting an action and then an item to act on with that action. Yeah. So it's kind of like an early version of those games. The engine that they wrote for this game is called the Scum Engine. I can't remember what that is short for now. It's like story something. Or Maniac, oh yeah, MM, Maniac Mansion, that's right. Oh, okay. So it's, it's kind of the game engine that runs this, but then a lot of the subsequent games use that same engine. So you've got the, the main characters, and then the antagonist characters. There's the, the people that live in this. So yeah, can you Dr. Give us the... Fred, mm -hmm. who lives in the mansion with his family, his wife, Nurse Edna, and their child, Weird Ed, and then they also live with two tentacles. I don't know what the story is behind that, <laughs> but Dr. Fred kidnaps Dave's girlfriend, Sandy. So then Dave is like, well, you know, I'm gonna go rescue her. And then he's like, hey guys, we're friends. Who wants to go on a dangerous mission? That's the main story. Yeah, so it, it's, it's kind of an interesting, like the setting and it feels a little more in depth than some of the stories we've been seeing right. for NES games. There's a lot of plot that unfolds. Yeah. Um, a big thing with this is it has sort of this real time. Yeah, um, which is linked with the cutscenes. Like after you wait a certain amount of minutes. Yeah, certain things will just y yeah. you'll be you'll be just doing something in the game, and then it just goes into a cutscene yeah. all of a sudden. Like certain characters will move throughout the rooms. Like at one point early in the story, Weird Ed is like, "Oh, I'm hungry," and then he goes downstairs and gets some cheese for him and his hamster. So then that tells you like, oh, I might not want to go into the kitchen or if one of my characters is there, I might want to move them. Yeah. So yeah, there's some really inter in interesting interactions with the cutscenes coming up. I thought it had really good music. It's always been right. one of my favorite music games. And then there's the, the whole aspect of getting captured by the right. people in the house and you get put in the dungeon and yeah. there's uh, a, a way to escape with, if you have multiple kids in there, you can get out by, I think it was a brick in the wall that uh, opens the door or something. Yeah, and um, then... And then the, you said there's a key. Yeah, there's yeah, okay. you, it's a really elaborate thing. You have to get a certain record from the Purple Tentacles room, um, and it pays, or plays this like horrific high screeching noise, and then you can record that with a cassette player in the mm, music room. That's right, I do remember. And then you go downstairs to the living room where there's, there's this glass chandelier, and then you put the cassette into the cassette player, you play it, the glass chandelier breaks, and then there's a rusty key in the chandelier. So then if any of your characters get stuck in the dungeon while they have the key, then they can just 
let themselves out. We should also mention that Day of the Tentacle came out later, which was a sequel to this game with had the tentacle characters. But it, that was another one I really enjoyed playing. Yeah, um, I played like 10 minutes of it, but I mm -hmm. haven't played super in depth. Our second game today is Kickle Cubicle, a arcade game that was ported to the NES. It's a sort of single screen arcade style kind of puzzle game. Although it's not, I wouldn't call it a puzzler in the, in the way that there's a lot of tricky thinking, but yeah. there there is some like planning of where you're gonna go and, and shoot things. The key premise of the game is that you're uh, freezing enemies on the screen. Yeah. Actually, it reminds me a lot of Bubble Bobble. Yeah. And actually, not, it, it, even more so now that I think about it, because you're sort of shooting things out that are freezing the enemies. Right. In Bubble Bobble, it was the bubbles that you're shooting out that are oh, right. capturing the enemies. I haven't played it in a while, so I like completely forgot. Whereas this one, you're freezing them in ice blocks. I guess in Bubble Bobble, though, once they're in a bubble, then they're you pop it and then get the points. Whereas this one, you freeze them and then kick the block to bridge to other areas of the level yeah. to get the uh, end goal are these uh, like red bags, right? That you yeah. need to get all the bags to, to beat the level. The main story of the game that you're playing as Kickle, basically his nice little kingdom was frozen in ice, which you know, not great for him. So he was the only person who wasn't affected. So then he has to unfreeze everything and get his kingdom back. His uh, ice breath. Right. Which is actually freezing the enemies, which again is similar to Bubble Bobble in that it's like yeah. kind of a thing coming out of your mouth that's freezing the enemies in place. And again, another similarity is that there's uh, a lot of like food items you collect yeah, to get like points. Yeah, um, collect the... I think they're popsicles? Yeah. I want to make sense that they do kind of frozen right. treats. And a lot of arcade games had that. I don't know where that started. That'd be kind of an interesting history like thing. Research. Because it like uh, just seems like a lot of those games just had like random bits of food you're collecting yeah. to get points. It's, it's uh, fairly simplistic yeah. graphics, but I think it was well done. Yeah. But again, it's all kind of on a, a single screen of play. Yeah, and the game itself was really like simple um, and like really cute and well done. Mm -hmm. um, like it wasn't super difficult to figure out. You could look at a level and go, "Oh yeah, I know how to do that." And the like in the first episode or level, you aren't really sure exactly how to do it, but as you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. So there's the different worlds. Right. Um, and it did seem like the shape of the levels were maybe to kind of to match the theme. It reminds me of, um, you played like Picross, those games where you kind of draw pixely things. I mean, it was a puzzle game. But I, maybe. <laughs> there's a lot of like, uh, kind of like pixel shaped things. Like this had like a level that was like an umbrella or yeah. like a. What looks like a turnip. Yeah. And so some of them kind of fit the theme of like you're in the garden world and like yeah. the levels would be shaped to uh, match that theme. So yeah, then it also had, uh, so there's the two buttons did two different actions. So the one was your frozen breath. Yeah. And then the other one you could make um, kind of like an ice pillar. Right, and then you put it down and then enemies can go around it. So it was a nice blocker if you just needed to like to make some space between you and the enemy. Well, I could see, I, I never ended up using it a bunch, but I'm sure there's some cool like strategies you could do yeah. where like oh i need to line them up to fill a certain spot so i'll put yeah. the blocker here and then wait for them to bump into right. it and then oh yeah freeze and then them. if you end up to, um lining up like you're standing in front of an ice block that you froze and then an enemy if you like push the ice block the enemy dies the one that the ice block is sliding into yeah okay i do remember that now yeah you mention it and it'll probably be one that I'll uh, sit down and play some more at some point here. Right, same for me, because it was just like a kind of really nice and pleasant game. Which, I mean, you do find some of those. A lot of them are as, like, cute, I guess. Yeah, so overall, a, a pretty cool game.
Thanks for joining us on this episode of Nest Generation. Let us know in the comments what your favorite puzzle game on the NES was. And make sure if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you leave a like and subscribe.